Magnus Dice. Ryan Wright has made a video telling of his experience of the meeting of the minds of the two greatest reactors on YouTube. Yes, we spoke of our dominance and claiming our rulership at the top of the mountain of this community called YouTube. And now I'm about to react to his experience. <laughs> yeah, it says reflecting on my conversation with Tyro Magnus. So, this should be very interesting because we had a nice long talk. Longer than I thought. Longer than my dick, as what Ryan would say. So, let's uh, move on with this, <laughs> shall we? Hey guys, Ryan right here. So I wanted to talk about something. I actually spoke with Tyrone Magnus a few days ago. He called me up, he had a couple of questions. Uh, he wanted to know how to enlarge your penis size because he is actually really small. It's surprising, he works out a lot to compensate for his tiny dick. No, he's fucking huge, he, he sent me a photo. He's I know, big. I did. But I wanted to talk about our conversation. This was to be like a quick chat, but we ended up talking for an hour and 12 minutes. One of the best moments of my life. Like, we got along. Yeah, he cried, uh, confided really in me, cool everything. Dude. Fucking love. We're very different in a lot of ways. But I kind of wanted to talk about how we're similar and what we share that is actually true. Because, you know, like, he does a lot of reactions. I do a lot of reactions. But if you guys see us, we're, we are pretty different. But there's some things I thought would be really cool to actually talk about a little bit. We do have very similar stories. I would tell his story, but his story is better told from his perspective. So if you guys don't know his story, ask him to do a video on it again. Because... It is really worth hearing, and it's inspiring to see where he's at now. For my personal story, I'll make it really short. I won't go into details. I basically uh, have been pursuing the movie business since I was a kid. When I was a teenager, I tried everything as going into acting, and then I even tried everything with writing. I actually stopped doing anything movie-related for like three years. I started learning a lot about business. I eventually went back into writing and doing movie related stuff because that's my passion. That. Being yeah. a movie buff is like the one thing I know I'm good at. So when I saw YouTube, I thought it would be great because I thought like, hey, you know what? I could put, I could do exactly what I want to do on YouTube and I get access to people right away. Like YouTube's worldwide. Like for anyone who's considering doing a YouTube channel, here's why I did it. YouTube is worldwide. You get access to like millions by millions of people across the globe and you don't have to go through any bullshit, you know, like in the typical business way of the movie industry, entertainment industry, you gotta climb this ladder that everyone yeah, talks about. To you gotta like that. impress so yeah. many fucking people who you don't care to impress. These people have like authority over you when they really need you actually. And I thought like, fuck that. With YouTube, I can just put my shit up on this huge website and I can get access to fans and subscribers right away. Let that do the talking for me. Like, I don't want to get someone else's approval of me in order to see if people will like me. I thought it would be so cool to do this. And sure enough, it's panning out exactly the way I wanted to. And it's totally great. It allows me to do what I want to do and not have to worry about someone else's validation of me. And I know Tyrone has a very similar philosophy in that. Like, Tyrone and I really believe in the power of positivity, the power of setting goals, the power of work ethic, especially, you know, like if you see Tyrone, he used to do a lot of workout videos and to be that committed to working out, I mean, everyone knows he's like super fucking buff. He's got those chesticles, man, fuck, and that huge ass dick that weighs more than any of his muscles. To be that committed to working out, I, my I legs feel like so big. that level of commitment is what he's taking into his level of YouTube success right now. Like he acknowledged, like I tell him like, dude, you have like 35,000 more subs than me. But we do get similar amount of views. So mm -hmm. I think that's cool that he acknowledged that, you know, like to know that, hey, we still are kind of not. I told him if we started around the same time, well, that's where the money's at. <laughs> we would have similar we amount of views of um, subscribers. If we built up ourselves on YouTube, we wouldn't have to try to get our foot in the door that people would start coming to us. And I won't talk a lot about every opportunity that's come my way, but if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't have these opportunities. I want to take some notes. I want to talk about I got a connection.
connection on Legendary, got to do a gig for them, got a connection on Warner Brothers, got to do a gig for them. Now I just met up with some people from Xbox. Latino Review, my favorite movie site. I have like three favorite movie sites and they're one of them. They hit me up too. Like, I'm just meeting with a lot of people. I might be doing something with Schmoes No, actually. Yeah, like, I have all these opportunities. I'm not going to divulge Tyrone's, but it was part of that belief of why we did YouTube was because we could have gone the traditional route of what we wanted to do. We have other things in mind. We don't want to just do reaction videos for the rest of our life. We want to do other things as well. Tyron has a lot of things in the pipeline that he wants to do, some other dreams and ambitions that I know he's going to get at because everything comes down to the same three basic principles. And him and I really believe it. it comes down to your philosophy, you know, what you know, what you think about, uh, your attitude, how you feel about what you know, how you feel towards others, how you feel about yourself, taking action, taking your philosophy and attitude and putting them into action. A lot of people like watch something like The Secret and go, maybe I can just think about it long enough. But no, you got to take it all and put it into action. And that's what we've both been doing. You know, there's a phrase that I heard a long time ago that says work full time on your job and part time on your fortune. And I saw YouTube as that way to sort of start accumulating that fortune. And I used to have a full-time job. Like, I had a full-time job that I fucking hated. I loathed it so much. Every day was anxiety, depression, anger. I just loved it. So I would do that 40 hours a week. Then I would go home and we do talked YouTube about for that. about 20 to 30 hours a week. Did not work out at all, so I gained a lot of weight. If you go back to the first episode <laughs> of uh, the movie review when we started this channel, I was super skinny. Oh, I gotta and see then, this. Um, throughout the year and a half, I <laughs> gained a lot of weight. Now I'm like working out again. I want to get like a Tyrone body. I was able to <laughs> replace my job because of you guys. You guys allow me to replace my job. I am able to do this now part-time, but I'm making more money than when I did a full-time job. And that's awesome, and it's really, really a big thank you to you guys. Like, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Like, I know I talk about a lot of things that a lot of people don't like to talk about. Like, you know, I just revealed some opportunities that I got. I revealed that, yeah, I do make money on YouTube. It really goes back to you dudes, and that's something Tyrone and I really believe in, too, is that, yes, he does make money. Everyone knows that he also has a job. One thing we really believe is really strongly tending to our subscribers, tending to the fans, because it's you guys who really make the channel. It's you guys who really matter. I remember realizing that when we were at, like, 10 subscribers. I've been grateful for ever, to this day like we jump up anywhere from like six to eight hundred followers on average a day now i love every single one of you guys i'm not just saying that because i remember when i had 10 followers i remember thinking if i know how to just tend to each individual person that i have at this 10 and to tend to those who subscribe you know some people focus on i want to get more views i want to get more subscribers i've always felt that i just want to focus on those people who are already subscribed and then everything else will kind of take care of itself and so Tyrone and I really believe on that, really tending to our subs. And I think that's why people like us, is because they know we're very genuine about it. Yeah, you know, we both get haters. Like, I think I get way more haters than he does. <laughs> I say some things that are just a little bit too offensive every now and again. But Tyrone is someone who does get haters. He said people call him the N-word often. Uh, in case you guys don't know what that word is, it's N-I-G-G-E-R. Say it out loud. If you don't know what that word means, say it to your parents. They'll tell you what it means. But we do get haters. And, and one thing that we get haters on, too, is like, who watches someone do a reaction, you know? I think Tyrone and I give opinions on the videos. We like to give our insights. And another thing, too, is, like, I asked Tyrone this. When he did that Star Wars reaction, I asked him, like, do you think that if you were in the theaters, you would have done that Wookiee noise? And he said, probably not. He wasn't faking it for the camera. And I don't fake my stuff either. The thing is, though, is when you're filming a video and you're aware that there's a lot of people watching And you're alone you, by it yourself. It out a certain energy level in you. Exactly. Like, I'll watch trailers alone sometimes, and, you know, like, I'll get excited. But when I'm with a buddy, like, my energy right. comes out of me even more. That is authentic what we're doing, and it actually does take a certain level of work to actually do that. It's not about putting all this energy in, it's not about faking or forcing a reaction, but it's about allowing yourself to be you while a camera's pointed at you. For example, mm -hmm. every time someone comes on this channel, I always tell them the one thing I tell them is something Tyrone and I really believe in, which is the power of believing in yourself and being yourself. I have a cheesy ass quote, but I really live by it. I tell people the word unique starts with the letter U for a reason. <laughs> so you just gotta be yourself. And I think it's about cheesy. how 
But he's right. Channel, and they're always so concerned about, are people going to like me? What if I don't have a reaction? And I'm always like, right. don't give a shit about anything. Exactly. Whatever you're feeling, just let it out and let people see it and just be yourself. And it actually takes work to be yourself. It takes work to just allow people to see who you mm -hmm. are, to see what you're feeling on the inside. It's progress. It's process. If you could do that, it's, I could see why people might be drawn to it. Because I'll admit, up until we were at like 60,000 subscribers, I always had a question of, why do people like watching reaction videos? But then it started to dawn on me that it's like, oh, it's because, you know, like, I get why there are some reactors who go places and some who don't. It's because like people like Tyrone and I like to be ourselves and really show that energy like we're aware that thousands of people are going to be watching our videos so it brings out a level of energy in us and it's because we know you guys are watching so we like to tend to that and really show you guys how we're feeling so yeah we deal with haters he deals with trolls better than I do I know I haven't talked word for word about everything Tyrone and I talked about because like I most of it a, like, a lot of it I'm not going to reveal because it's very personal this is all thoughts and attitudes nothing homosexual up after my conversation with him and it makes sense how we are sort of at similar levels because we have similar point of views on things you know and we certainly have our differences and the reason why we have our differences is because i work on embracing myself he works on embracing himself and through that we got two different individuals and i really hope to work with this guy one day like i really want to work with tyrone the main reason i'm doing this video hopefully you stay till the end for this part I'm I here. want Tyrone Magnus to quit his job. For you guys who really follow I Tyrone, you know he has a job that's outside of the I knew going to say that. I think he should quit. He didn't tell me the income he exactly makes on YouTube. I'm hearing it and I'm like, dude, you can totally quit your job. He can do more videos. He can produce better quality videos. Like, I'm a fan of Tyrone Magnus. And I was telling him, like, dude, I know you got more subs than me. If we could get similar amount of views and you have more subs than me, you will be fine. I really wanted to quit his job because I think it was so inspiring. I didn't really talk a lot about like how much I hated my job when I was doing this channel. I didn't really talk about when I was able to quit my job. Now I mention it, but I think it would be so inspiring for so many people to see someone like Tyrone who was building this channel, then he was able to go out there and replace his full-time job because he was able to just tend to his subscribers. Like that would be so inspiring. Tyrone, you wanna to get to one million subs faster? Quit your fucking job. Get a job going to male stripping. Let's face it, you got a big cock, you're fucking buff, you're black, fucking beautiful to look at. So quit your goddamn job. Another thing, too, is I want him and Gator Martin and Cooley to come out to California in the summer. Holy I thought shit. of a three part short film series that we could do where it's about the reactors coming together, like it would actually be scripted. And I thought it'd be cool if, like, one video was on my channel, another on Tyro's, another on Gator's. That would be so fucking cool to do that. So if you guys could just start telling Tyrone to quit his job, that would be great. There we go. If you could convince Gator <laughs> and Tyrone to come out to California so we could put this short film together, that would also be splendid. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. You can subscribe to The Real Rejects, por favor. And you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Tyrone is always like, one million subscribers. <laughs> uh, I just want product placement. <laughs> if I can uh, just get 25,000 followers on Instagram and post a picture and get paid thousands of dollars for it, That'd be nice. That'd be nice. Why bullshit you guys? I didn't know that. Benefit you, hmm. And it will benefit me. That's interesting. <laughs> He's real, real. <laughs> Yeah, man, me and him had a nice long talk. We had we had a good talk, and uh, yeah, we are similar in a lot of ways. And um, we we got along fine. We got along fine, you know. And um, so while he was talking, I was writing certain things that I wanted to remember uh, to talk about. So when we were talking about both uh, being actors, like me, um, you know, I won IMTA Actor of the Year 2012, and you know, you know, you kind of have that glitz and glamour in your eyes and you know while I'm I'm a realist you know I was like okay I really want to start working right now I want to start going on a lot of auditions and you know everything I just want to do it but having a full-time job and wanting to be an actor full-time uh doesn't exactly work especially because you have to go on auditions you have to travel, pay money, food, this and that, take time off the job, it really was hard. And things really weren't turning out. So I said, okay, well, I've got this YouTube channel. And I thought it kind of like how Bruce Lee did, um, it became famous. You know, he said, uh, 
you know, uh, basically, I'm kind of paraphrasing, but it's kind of like, well, if you can't make it in Hollywood, you'll go through the side door, you know, or the back door. I forgot what he said. I think he said the side door. So it's like he went back to Asia, made a huge explosion there, and then America heard him and was like, hey, Warner Brothers wants to see you over here. Enter the dragon. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So for me, it was kind of like, you know, maybe I can build a huge... Um, you know, just build my brand, build my company, build a business for myself with YouTube, and then other opportunities will come. Because I've seen certain YouTubers sitting here watching TV, and I'm like, Pete's Hut commercial? This motherfucker, I just watched him earlier today. You know, another dude I just saw in, um, did I see him in a Truth commercial? I think it was a Tobacco Truth commercial. I saw him in that. I think he does a lot of vines. Uh, I saw another dude, I could have swore spoken reasons, um, got in a major movie. He was playing like a criminal on the run and he had like, the woman was his parole officer or something. I was like, get the fuck out. I was like, look at this. It's like these guys, you know, their talent is um, being shown on YouTube and it gets enough, you know, their fame on YouTube gets so big and pe big people are like, hey, look, do we need these motherfuckers uh, and our shit, you know? So, that's what. That's one way I'm hoping to do things with Hollywood. If I go to Hollywood, if I do things in Hollywood, if I become a major action star, like a lot of you believe I should be, or a movie star, comedic actor, whatever it is, I love to entertain and have fun. I just mainly like to inspire, educate, and make people happy. That's what I'm mainly about. You know, if you, so many people write me and say, hey, you know, I watch you every day. I, as soon as I get home and put my book bag down, I'm watching you, you know. As soon as I get home from work, I'm watching you because you make me laugh. You always make my day better. I mean, to be that guy that I remember, you know, for me when I was younger, it was, you know, guys like Bruce Lee, you know. Like Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Eddie Murphy, you know what I'm saying? John claude Van Damme, <laughs> you know, just to name a few, just I can think of when I was younger, you know, when I would get home from uh, work or from, um, you know, uh, school, I would put their movies in and it always, you know, it entertained me, you know, it took the stress away and inspired me, you know, it just made things better. So... That's my whole thing. That's my whole story with, um, you know, I can do another video on my complete story, which is what I kind of told him. Um, but that's kind of like, you know, his whole thing, he was getting fed up with some certain things in, in the business. And um, that's why he did what he did. With me, it was kind of like, I don't have the time or the money to really get there. Because, you know, some of the time, like a lot of kids making it in Hollywood, they don't make it in Hollywood first because they have set up successful parents that are able to cart them from audition to audition and all that stuff. So, that that's, um, you know, uh, yeah, okay, so the next thing I was quitting my job, but I'll, I'll talk about that last. Um, uh, yes, I do have some things coming up. I have been contacted by certain news sources. Yes, news sources, major news sources about my videos. I have been contacted, as you already know, by a man that's going to have his um, cartoon series done by the same people who um, draw the uh, boondocks, okay? He asked for my voice. Um, I will be talking with a major YouTube channel very soon about doing something together. So things are coming together, and there's more than that, but things are coming together. I'm telling you, y'all, the Magniverse, Magnus of Potamia is growing, and seriously, just like he said, it's all because of you. He said he realized that you guys made his channel at the, like the 10th subscriber. This is something that I inherently knew, generally knew. I didn't realize it full face, like, bow, right in your fucking face, until my reactions started to go global and get really big. Because I was like, wait a minute. Didn't I start off as a wrestling channel? I'm a reactor now. You know, and 
it was after, it was a little bit after I started doing reactions when I was like, wow, I mainly only do reaction videos now. And I was like, this is totally far away from where I started. It was, it was wrestling and workout videos. And then I would answer some questions. And then it, 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 you know, when I was with Sarah, it was, you know, Magnus answers a lot by myself, but I would bring her in as a guest. And it, it, that was a nice, um, you know, uh, uh, chemistry really like that. And all of a sudden the reaction videos start to come. And now I'm mainly just Magnus answers and reactions. Now I'm still going to do the other stuff. I know a lot of y'all love when I do inspirational goal setting and all that other thing. I'm going to do that. Don't worry about that. But, um, yeah, so, um... Yeah, I do have some things coming up, so let me mark that off. Um, let me see. Um, I already talked about the subscribers making me views versus subscribers. And when, he, when we were talking, he says, well, what do you look at? And I said, well, my goal is one million subscribers. And uh, he was like, I look at views. And uh, I think his, I think you cultivate what you're mainly focused on. Okay, so I'm mainly focused on 1 million subscribers. That is my main goal. And that goal came into action when I realized, I was like, wow, a lot of these major YouTubers, like I didn't realize when you were acknowledged as being major. I never knew for, for years, literally like two years, I didn't know, well, all three years, actually, I just found out. I didn't know there was a 100,000 subscribers plaque. That would have been my first goal, but I didn't know. I thought you, there was only a 1 million subscribers plaque. But I was like, oh, all the major guys. Oh, so you're in the big leagues. Once you get a 1 million subscribers, um, yeah, sorry. Um, I, I, I'm looking at the clock here, and I'm like, damn. Hopefully y'all didn't miss any good information. Um, so... You're major once you, you get a 1 million subscribers plaque. And I was like, oh, so that's where I need to be, to be in the big leagues. Hey, I just found out about 100,000 subscribers. So cool. I know I'm in the big leagues now, but to get in the big, big leagues, it, and it's still my goal. It'll never stop being my goal until I get to it. And then I create a new goal, okay? So, um... Like I said, his thing was views. He wanted to get a lot of views. He's asked where the money is. My thing was 1 million subscribers because I want to be in the big leagues with the best. Okay? So that, that we have two different outlooks on how we view our channel and what our goals are. But it's similar because we both want to be the best at what we do. You get that? Um, as far as the trolls go, he, uh, yeah, he makes a lot more of... <laughs> He says a lot more controversial things than I do, you know. It's the jokes, it's his humor, shit that he does. And uh, he's very frank. He's very frank. He's not afraid to, to tell you what he wants to say. So I, maybe he does get a lot more trolls than me. But, um, you know, I get the racist shit all the time. You know, I have to ban people almost every day. You know, I get, I get called nigger at least once a week. At least. Um, but uh, I thank the trolls because... Um, you know, when I, my first comment ever was go kill yourself, nigger. And that was when I did my, um, the rock impression, which was my first ever video. And, uh, I was like, okay, huh? welcome to YouTube. It's all downhill from here, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It can't, it can't get no worse. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they call you the worst word, uh, in the, uh, the American English language that you can call anybody. So I'm like, okay, I'm so used to it now. It's just like seeing, you know, it's like a gnat in my face. It's like, you know, it's like okay, I, I banned. You know what I mean? So, um, and yes, I get the once in a while I get the fake reactor thing, which I I I did you know a video about that a few days ago, and that's something that also doesn't worry me because I know that. I'm truthful with my reactions. It's me being me, you know? And what he was talking about when he said, you know, what I've done, the, what I've done that in the movie theater. Um, and I told him, I said, probably not. Tell you the truth, it depends on who I would have been around. Because, like, I will, I, will, I am me all the time. And, you know, within reason, though. So, like, I wouldn't go to a, you know, a... Um, you know, a, a, a prestigious banquet, 
and act like I don't have any fucking manners, you know, even if I want to, you know, it's just, you know, you, you have a certain way you act in certain settings. We all know this, you know, there's a certain level to being yourself because some people, they just take it and, and they just want to shock people and be an ass, but I'm not like that. So I'll give you an example of something I did. At the end of Transformers, the first movie um, that Michael Bay did, I was so pissed that he had um, Megatron dominate Prime. I'm a G1 fan. I'm G1 for life. For life. And Prime never got his ass kicked by Megatron. Unless Megatron cheated. Whether he used a pawn, a hostage, an extra weapon, or it was always something Megatron had to do to get over on Prime. So I was pissed at how Prime was getting his ass kicked. Well, when I went to see Transformers 2, okay, remember that fight in the woods when Prime, well, I stood up in the theater and I was like, that's right, Prime, kick their motherfucking asses. I did that. So I'm me. I'm me, okay? Would I have done the, you know, Wookiee Roar? I don't know. Probably not, but it just depends on my energy level and what I'm into. That's why I said when I reach 1 million subscribers, I know, so a lot of y'all say it would be so fucking fun to watch a movie with you. Let me tell you something. And I talked to this news source about this and he said, would you ever do full movie reactions? And I told him, I said, if I ever get to 1 million subscribers, I always thought about doing a meet and greet and they all get to watch a movie with me. I said, shit, if it's Batman v Superman, I said, the way it's going now, if, if I start to exponentially really snowball with subscribers, I'll try to do that. I'll try to get a theater for just me and the Magnus sites, and we'll go in the fucking IMAX and watch Batman v Superman together. And they all get to sit around me. We all get to have fucking fun. And a lot of y'all, like me, I get comments that say, I thought I was the only person that reacted like this when I saw, um, you know, trailers. He acts like me too. That's part of the reason why people watch us because they sit there and they see a person that acts like them and they're like, you know what? That's camaraderie. That's like, wow, I belong here. I belong on this channel. This guy is like me. Also, the flip side is true. There are people that watch me that want to be able to have my energy, that want to be able to let their hair down, so to speak, like I do. They want to be able to do what I do, so they watch me. Just like you'll watch a boxer because you may want to be able to emulate his style, maybe be able to fight like him, his confidence, whatever it is, people do that. So, you know, um, let me see here, what's next? Yeah, I just talk about being yourself. You gotta be yourself. Um, Ryan talked about, he said, if I ever came to California, he said, he, he, he said, he was like, dude, if you come, I will cook, make you pancakes and sausage. And I was like, here we go. <laughs> I was like, he said sausage for a reason. And I feel like he said sausage, just being real. And then he went and he was like, I didn't, and sausage is what you, I'm like, I don't want to hear Ryan. <laughs> so, um. I wouldn't mind uh, coming out there to, to California and do something um, one day. Uh, not yet, but one day I wouldn't mind because I hear California is beautiful. I just don't want to come when the big one hits. You know, I don't need San Andreas happening. The one day I decide to fly out there, you know what I mean? Personally, y'all know me, y'all been watching me, y'all know I'm, I'm scared of California to a certain extent, you know, because uh, all the shit I hear, y'all getting, uh, you know, uh, them, them uh, uh, radioactive waters from Fukushima and shit flowing over there and got that damn fault, San Andreas. I'm like, hey, fuck it, fuck California. I'll go to Hawaii or something, you know? But anyway, so last thing about quitting my job. You know, um, I 
you know, he, he was just telling me, he was just like, yo, go for it, just do it, just do it. Come on, do it, I'm Ryan Wright, I'm here, I'm making it, I pay all my bills, you should do it. Look at my beard, look at my girlfriend, I do it. I was like, okay, okay, okay. So, um, I have not quit yet, but it's something I've been mulling over in the mind. It's something I'm going to have to uh, sit down and I'm going to have to go over, because um, I have a certain amount of debt left. And um, and bills and stuff, and see if um, I'm able to. Because in the past three months, I would say I probably could, but I'm still not sure. See, here's the thing: I share debt with another person, and uh, we're trying to get rid of that debt very quickly. And my thing is, the job can help me can supplement extra income. It may slightly slow. It, it, I'm not sure. I got to do, do the numbers, but it could slightly slow me down if I did quit in paying off my debt. But once that debt is paid off with that person, <laughs> we home free, baby. You know, I read about this one story about how there's this um, one general who uh, he would he when he would go to conquer a new land. He would tell his men to burn their ships. And the reason why was because when you burn your ship, you ain't you can't run. You 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 can't go back home. You can't go back to what you were trying to do. You have to defeat this other army and you have to take their ships. So I give you that story to kind of paint a picture of my ship is my job. Okay? And um, what I want to do is I do so bad want to burn that motherfucking ship. And I burn that ship and then I take on a new boat. Fully take on a new boat. Which is not my enemy, but it's YouTube. It's YouTube. YouTube then now allows me to set sail on the high seas. You get what I'm saying? So um, it's coming very soon. It's coming very soon. I'm just not sure when August was kind of like my point of thinking, you know, I may be able to do it then. Who knows? It could be sooner, maybe later. I'm thinking probably sooner than later, but we'll see. We'll see. So thank you all for staying this long. Um, you know, um, it, it's, it's crazy how things are turning out, man. Things are starting to snowball. Opportunities are rolling in. And um, you stick with me. I'm telling you. I just feel like there's something big coming, y'all. I feel it. I feel it. And I felt it before I went to IMTA. I, there's these points in my life where I literally feel something coming. And I'm coming. I look. I'm coming. I'm pumped. I get this. I'm sorry. So I just feel something coming. And I feel something good and something big is coming. And God, that sounds gay. But I'm sure Ryan will have a field day with that. But I just, um, I'm telling you, stick with me. One million subscribers. Thank you, Ryan Wright, for doing that video. Appreciate it, brother. See you soon. Woo!